I'm Amanda McNulty of Clemson Extension and Making It Grow. I'm speaking with Brooke Horton. Brooke is the outreach coordinator for the produce safety portion of a new federal law that in South Carolina is being implemented under the Consumer Protection Division of the South Carolina Department of Agriculture. And this big fancy law is called what? Uh, the Food Safety Modernization Act, so As FISMA for short. FISMA, that's yep. easier to say. Right. <laughs> and, um, and why is this coming about? Uh, so this is supposed to be a proactive approach to uh, biological contamination of our produce instead of a reactive approach. So instead of having to recall lettuce or find out, trace back oh. where it came from that's been contaminated, we'll already have um, no contamination, hopefully, with this proactive approach. Okay. Now, I hear about GAP, and I know a lot of us hear about GAP. Um, and what's the difference between GAP for our farmers and for us consumers and this program? Right, so GAP is voluntary. It's buyer-driven, so it's based on who you're selling your produce to, whereas the Food Safety Modernization Act produce safety rule, it's going to be a federally mandated law, so there's it's a regulation. Okay. Um, and obviously, it's not voluntary. So who is covered by it? Are, is every single farm covered by it, or does it just farms with produce, with vegetables and fruits, or what? Right, so it's going to be the produce farmers, um, fruits and vegetables, but there are exemptions to the law. Um, the first exemption would be a basic exemption. So if their um, produce sales are less than 25000 for the previous three years, and that amount is adjusted for inflation, okay. so right now it's twenty six seven. Um, but they'll be exempt if they have that low profit margin. Um, and then if they're selling all their produce to a commercial processor, uh -huh. so say, for instance, all their produce is going to McCall Farms, then they would be exempt. Um, we also have an exemption for those who uh, have all their produce eaten on their farm. Mm -hmm. So if you're just sharing with your family and friends, your church, oh. you're going to be exempt. Okay. And then uh, rarely consume raw produce, so items such as sweet potatoes, sweet corn. If oh. you're so this is just stuff that's consumed raw. Right. Okay. Right. All right. right. Okay. And then uh, the most complicated exemption is a qualified exemption, and that's produce farmers who have 500,000 profit with food sales, not just produce, but food sales, um, if they're under that margin and their produce goes to a qualified end user, then they would be exempt. Okay, so in South Carolina, we think there may be 350 people overall, farmers, that are gonna be affected. Right, okay. right. And so um, you're in a position in South Carolina that I think is great because the Agriculture Department here under Hugh Weathers has decided that instead of letting the federal people come in and do the inspections, South Carolina can do the inspections. Is that correct? Right. So we adopted the law in South Carolina to where we will be doing the outreach portion of it and the regulatory portion. So we won't have federal inspectors on our farms in South Carolina. So the same things are going to be covered. It's going to end up that people are going to be doing the same things. They just get to work with local people. Right, okay. right. Well, um, so how does, there are several things involved. The first one, I think, is um, water's involved, worker training, and um, soil amendments, things like that. So let's talk a little bit about those. Right, so there's uh, several parts to the law worker health and hygiene and training, and then we have the biological soil amendments. So um, that's manure and compost, compost manure, okay. Manure, yeah. And then um, post water and pre water. Okay, so, so irrigation and then water used in um, processing and packing and right. all that. Right, and okay. then we'll uh, go over sanitation, equipment, and tools. All right. Um, things like that. And the first thing I think is just a one day come to a meeting and learn about all this stuff. Yes, yeah, so the first step is the Produce Safety Alliance training. Um, it's an eight-hour course where they basically come and we go through the outline of everything, all those sections that we talked about. Um, we'll go through every step of what they should be doing on their farm all right. um, and kind of walk them through it. They're welcome to ask questions um, and basically kind of giving them a gist of what the produce safety rule involves. And obviously it's a lot. And you and Clips and Extension are putting this on together. That's right. And you yes. go into several places around the state. It's easy to find a meeting to attend. It is, yes. And we've been doing them monthly. Okay. So. There's a lot to choose between. And then after that, this is what I really think is nice. Y'all are doing courtesy visits, I understand. Right. So the next step after the training is the on-farm readiness reviews. And those on-farm readiness reviews, it's going to be an educational approach. We're going to go onto the farm and basically decide um, what might need to be changed. So pointing out those key areas and key aspects to the farmer that could be changed 
to be in compliance with this law. Is this mostly done during the harvesting season? Yes, so we'll want to see the harvest, how you're packing, mm -hmm. um, your packing area, your workers will want to see them. Because they have to be trained, don't right, they? Right, they do, the and we're kind of to looking trained. to see if they're following hygiene practices. Um, if like you have, what? Um, washing their hands, oh, okay. um, properly uh, discarding of produce that's touched the ground, um, oh. stuff like yeah, okay. yeah. So we're just kind of um, visually inspecting and kind of walking the farmer through what an inspection may look like. Um, and this is a voluntary process; it's free. Um, it's offered through our department, and we'll have a Clemson Extension agent with us. So there's a lot of um, educational people there to help you. Um, and we also hand over any notes that we take, so it's oh, a confidential okay. thing. We mm -hmm. don't put any information out there about our visit. Um, no penalties a, right. and no fines or anything. Right, yeah. and even if you are uh, exempt from the law, we will still do these on-farm readiness reviews for you. Well, why would somebody who's exempt want you to come? Um, there again, the proactive approach. Um, just wanting them, some people just want to be a, ahead of the game and okay, make sure wonderful. that their produce okay. is safe. So we've seen a lot of growers like so, that. So um, I can see that if somebody, I mean, because a lot of these people are so excited to be growing really healthy food for their clients and I mean, for their customers, they can say, and even though we don't have to, we've gone through all this because we want you to have the right. best and safest food possible. That's right. That's cool. Yep. And then I guess, dum da dum, -dum the <laughs> real inspection. Right. So the inspection obviously would come after all of that. Um, hopefully you've taken the opportunity to do all those things um, by the time they get there, but those will start in the spring of 2019. Now do you go, we've got 350 people to look at, you can't see everybody at once, how are you going to break it down? Right, so they, um, they plan to start with all the large farms because okay. they should have been in compliance as of January 26, 2018 and then we'll work our way down towards the smaller farms. All right. Um, well, I think that we are fortunate in South Carolina. We've got a lot of people who are entering um, the growing business. Right. We've got a lot of people who've been in it for a long time. Everyone's going to be given an opportunity to, to um, learn how to maybe tweak and do things even a little bit better. And, um, and it just means that we in South Carolina, the consumers, are going to have um, the confidence to know that we have the safest of all possible foods. Exactly. Gosh, this is, thank you so much. <laughs> if people, and this is a complicated thing, mm -hmm. if people want to know more, and particularly farmers who might be covered or they might want to find out if they're covered, of course. Um, what's the best way to get information about this? Um, so they can either call me directly because I do a lot with the outreach part portion of this law. So you can um, help them figure yep. out if they need to take the trainings. Yep. Okay. Um, um, or and what's your can, number? 803. Uh, uh, three five one one two four four. Okay. Or uh, they can visit our website. It's www.scproducesafety.com, and it'll take them to a whole list of things that we have. We have resources on there. We have a list of our trainings on there, as well as um, on farm readiness review. You can sign up for that oh, on there. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of great resources on there okay. for farmers, and we're great resources. So it's great. To, uh, Take advantage. <laughs> well, I want to thank you and the South Carolina Department of Agriculture, particularly the Consumer Protection Division, for what y'all are doing. Thank you.